Hey YouTube, it's ACU. Welcome to the 232nd episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. Let's talk about the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, several leaks surrounding the devices, as well as the future of mobile tech pertaining to holograms, and the all new iOS 8.3 and 8.4 untethered jailbreak. <laughs> All right, so to start off, if you haven't watched my recent coverage, yes, there's an all new untethered jailbreak that supports up to iOS 8.4, the latest public firmware. So if you've already jailbroken or you're excited to start jailbreaking, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's coverage by discussing the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. So recently there have been several leaks surrounding the devices, both of which are expected to be released later this fall. And the most recent details come from leaked schematics that suggest both devices will feature overall near identical designs as their predecessors being the current iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Now there is also an alleged component leak, the rear shell for the device similar to the one that I covered last year for the iPhone 6 was publicized. Now this component seems to suggest minimal internal design changes, however according to 9to5Mac, a leaked logic board suggests that the device will feature less chips than its predecessor as well as a base of 16 gigabytes. So yes, as of now, based on current rumors, it appears that Apple will stick with the entry level 16 gigabyte configuration for the 6S and 6S Plus. Also, they're rumored to be slightly wider and slightly taller, the 6 being 0.16 millimeters taller and 0.13 millimeters wider than its predecessor, likely to accommodate the inclusion of Force Touch technology. And for those of you who are unaware what Force Touch is, essentially it's the technology found in the Apple Watch as well as several MacBook models that's able to determine how much pressure you're actually putting into your touches or clicks respectively. Also, both devices are expected to see an NFC chip bump, so we may see new NFC capabilities beyond just being able to use the devices for Apple Pay. Of course, we will see new camera improvements. This generation is expected to see one of the most significant camera updates to the iPhone since its initial release, as well as a new Qualcomm chip for handling LTE and cellular data transfer that's expected to support LTE speeds up to two times current capabilities. Now next up, I wanted to share an incredible product that I came across that will be on Kickstarter until Friday. Essentially, it turns holographic experiences from something of science fiction into reality. The Hollis transforms the content on any iOS or Android device into three dimensions. Simply download the app, connect a primary device, and up to four other devices via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for perspective tracking. Essentially, it projects multiple images from the top of the device onto a glass pyramid below to create a 3D image that's viewable from all angles, which adjusts based on perspective data transmitted from secondary smartphones, accelerometers, and gyroscopes. Now, the best part is the source of said images. It's able to display literally anything from your tablet or smartphone, and the possibilities are virtually endless. It will be used for games, education, in hospitals, and so much more. The Hollis will finally open up an entirely new world for developers, and the creators will issue a number of SDKs, including for game engines such as Unreal. And to get your hands on the future of mobile holographic-like tech when it launches, be sure to check out Hollis's Kickstarter campaign. I will have a link to that down below in the more info. And moving on, let's talk about jailbreaking. So yes, as I mentioned previously, a new untethered jailbreak is available for all devices on up to iOS 8.4, the latest public firmware as of recording this video. So let's go over absolutely everything you need to know related to Tide G, which of course is the name of not only the team who develops the jailbreak, but their utility. So the jailbreak was initially released for iOS 8.3 on June 23rd when absolutely nobody thought it would be. Taiji surprised everyone because they previously confirmed that they wouldn't release a jailbreak until at least iOS 9. They wanted to divert attention so that they could work in stealth mode to get their jailbreak ready for a public release. And on the 7th, Apple actually stopped signing iOS 8.3 to the public. But don't worry, you can still jailbreak. In fact, you can still restore to the latest firmware, which now is iOS 8.4 because 8.3 was succeeded by the firmware on June 30th and complete an untethered jailbreak thanks to Taiji's latest updates to their utility. So yes, looping back to iOS 8.4, on June 30th, Apple released the firmware to the public, which mostly includes revisions to the 
Music and iBooks app, as well as the inclusion of Apple Music, the company's all new streaming service. And it's actually interesting because on iOS 8.4's release date, Taiji wasn't the first group to release an untethered jailbreak. However, it was still their jailbreak because it utilized their exploits, but essentially a group by the name of PP, they released the Mac adaptation of Taiji's iOS 8.1.2 jailbreak, while essentially they reverse engineered Taiji for 8.1.3 through 8.3, utilized the exact same exploits and applied them for iOS 8.4. Now, a number of things were actually wrong with PP. Not only Taiji, but also Sorik, the creator of Cydia, recommend that you completely stay away from it and that you just utilize Taiji on iOS 8.4. It's the only safe method. So if you already jailbroke with PP, as I mentioned in my untethered jailbreak tutorial for Taiji, I definitely advise restoring inside of iTunes and then re-jailbreaking, utilizing the current version of Taiji, which as of recording this video is 2.3.1. And as of now, you can only jailbreak with Taiji utilizing Windows. So what about Mac OS 10? I know a lot of individuals have asked me when a Mac version of Taiji is going to be released. Unfortunately, it likely won't happen. Taiji has yet to release a single Mac utility to date. They develop exclusively for Windows. Looking back though, as I mentioned before, PP actually modified Taiji for 8.1.2 to fully support and function on Macs. But due to PP's blatant plagiarism, of Taiji, it's unlikely we'll see them release a tool this time around because they've received extreme heat from not only Taiji themselves, but also the jailbreak community. So what does that mean if you, like myself, only own a Mac? Well, unfortunately, you'll have to do one of three things and all of them involve Windows. The first being you'll have to borrow a friend's Windows-based PC. Second, you'll have to install Windows via Boot Camp, which is native and built into Mac OS X for all Macs except some. There are a few that aren't compatible with it, such as a version of the iMac that utilizes Apple's Fusion Drive. And the third and final option is to get Windows installed in a virtual environment, which is by far the easiest. I definitely recommend utilizing Parallels. That's what I use, and it's incredible incredibly simple to do so and to get everything completely set up and fully jailbreak inside of a virtual environment. And for those of you who are interested in what to obtain from Cydia once jailbroken, I put together a list of approximately 70 Cydia tweaks that are compatible with iOS 8.3 and iOS 8.4 across two different videos. If you have yet to watch them, I will have them linked down below in the more info. Most of the tweaks will function on iOS 8.4, however, there are a handful that only work on 8.3. And with that said, let's wrap up by talking about iOS 9. So since I last recorded for this series, Apple issued the second beta iteration of the firmware to registered developers, and I highlighted a security flaw as to how it's technically possible to bypass Apple's developer checkpoints when restoring to the firmware inside of iTunes to actually install it on any device without having its UDID registered through an Apple developer account. So if you're interested in that video for educational purposes only, of course, course, definitely watch through it. And for those of you who are interested in winning a brand new iPad Air 2, all you have to do is navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari, sign up, come back here, rate this video up, and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. If you don't know what to leave in the comments, try answering the question of the day. What are your thoughts on Apple Music? Again, Apple's all new streaming service, which I've covered a couple of times in separate videos. I'll have coverage linked to below. Again, just be sure to let me know in the comments as to what you think about Apple Music and whether you change any key features. And if you guys wanna be updated more often, such as when I release new videos similar to this one, as well as when I cover things like jailbreaking and just iOS in general, be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.